Talk to me about the government. They had a recommendation to list Iran's Revolutionary Guard as a terror group, but they're now backflipping, I'm told, because they regard this uh, Revolutionary Guard as an organ of a nation state. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, James, but they're listed as a terror group in the United States. Why on earth aren't we listing them here? You're right, Peter, and this has been outstanding work by my colleague, Senator Claire Chandler, to point this out. It looks like the government started and went through a terrorism listing process for the IRGC. They stopped it at some point for an unknown reason and have offered no adequate explanation for why that's the case. I mean, let's remember that the IRGC is the principal state sponsor of terrorism across the Middle East. Some of its proxies include Hamas and Hezbollah, uh, Palestinian Islamic Jihad, uh, Shia militant uh, groups in Iraq and Syria, who are right now launching attacks on American bases and troops in the region, uh, the Houthis in Yemen. Uh, this is a very bad uh, actor, mm. and we should stand with our allies and our friends by listing them as a terrorist organisation, but this government is too weak to do so yet again. All right, I've sat in National Security Cabinet as an advisor, obviously, but I've watched evidence from ASIO and ASIS chiefs in that room. I've seen it turn the room and I've seen them contest uh, evidence or, or advice or briefings from other senior people around the table. Uh, perhaps in some instances they've been military, other times they've been foreign service or politicians. To take them out of the room, James, I think is extraordinary. I think this is a big call. They've been in the room under Labor governments in the past and certainly under coalition governments. This is a concerning move. What's behind it? You're right, Peter, and this was an extraordinary scoop by your colleague Shari Markson last night. I mean, what, no wonder the Albanese government has been so weak on national security. No wonder they've made so many poor decisions. They haven't had the key people in the room to provide them with the advice that they need and maybe some of the advice that they don't want to hear and maybe that's why they've been removed from the room. But I want to reassure your viewers, Peter, it's not all bad news because the Director Generals of ASIO and ASIS have been replaced on the committee by the Minister for Energy and Climate Change, Chris Bowen. Now, Chris Bowen obviously has much more insight to share on national security and intelligence than the heads of our intelligence agencies who are involved day-to-day -day in collecting intelligence both offshore and onshore against the terrorism, foreign interference and espionage threats that our country faces. Yeah, you know, you know a comedian there and it gives me no comfort to have Chris Bowen in the room. <laughs> you and I know how much you can, you, can, you can deal with the other side on issues like this, James, quietly uh, behind closed doors and get them to back down when they made a dumb, dumb decision. I think this is a dumb decision. Are you hopeful you can have a word to Labor senior ministers, perhaps even the Prime Minister, and get them to rethink this move? I mean, we just only had that advice from Mike Burgess, the ASIO chief, for people at home saying, you know, he is concerned about Islamist terror attacks in Australia over the next 12 months. So when this committee meets, he is not there keeping the room up to date, keeping the Prime Minister up to date about Australia's security. Surely they can back down here. I really hope so, Peter. I hope sense prevails, but I'm concerned because it's my understanding this decision was made some time ago. It was not a recent decision. And for much of the past year or so, these meetings have been taking place without those agencies being represented in the room. And as you said before, you can't always anticipate when they've got a contribution of value to make. And if you don't regularly have them in the room, if they're only invited occasionally, you're missing out on the insight that they and all the thousands of patriotic members of the intelligence community are working hard to provide. I mean, what is the point of having intelligence agencies, funding them and giving them powers to provide advice and insight to government if you are not there to hear it at the critical point in which you're making decisions in the national interest? So I hope the Prime Minister is embarrassed by these revelations. I hope he revisits the decision that he has clearly made to kick these intelligence agency chiefs off the NSC, and I hope he quickly reverses it, but I'm not holding my breath. Well, I think he'd be a big fan if he did. I think it's the right thing to do to reverse it. 